In this video, I'd like to talk about the fractal geometry of nature. And a fractal is essentially a self-similar object, or it's an object that has fractional dimension. And remember that with dimension, we have a line which we can consider as a one-dimensional object. We have a square or something on the plane which has two dimensions. And something in space, like a cube, is three-dimensional. And fractals have dimension that is usually between these whole numbers, or maybe even outside of them. It could be greater than three as well. For instance, this object right here, which we call the Coke snowflake, this has dimension that is approximately 1.26. In fact, it's an irrational number, which is why we have to write it as an approximation. But for all of these objects and all of these examples, this video is really just to give an overview on the general idea of fractals. And in later videos, we will explore each of these in greater depth. Now, the word fractal comes from the mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot, and this is a picture of his book, which is called The Fractal Geometry of Nature, and this book was written in 1982. This book and this mathematician essentially summarizes all of the known ideas about fractals. The majority of these ideas were known before Mandelbrot, but he essentially put them all together and combined them. And before we take a closer look at these fractals found in nature, let's focus on these purely mathematical fractals. So each of these three examples, these are created from geometric objects. And let's specifically look at this Coke snowflake. This is created from an equilateral triangle and with that triangle as a starting point, we will carry out a process infinitely many times to get this shape you can see here. But it starts from something very simple. So let's take a closer look at how that's actually accomplished. And you can see here that we start with this equilateral triangle, meaning all of the angles and all of the side lengths, these are all equal. And with each of these starting side lengths, what we will do is split them into three equal sections. And in the middle section, we'll replace it with another equilateral triangle, where the sides of this equilateral triangle are one third of the size of the original side lengths. And that would be step one, putting in an equilateral triangle in each of these side lengths in the middle. And then step two, we're gonna start with each of these smaller side lengths, which again are one third of the original side lengths. And we will split them into three equal sections. And in the middle sections of each, we will replace them with equilateral triangles. And for step three, we will carry out the process again. In the middle of each of these side lengths, we'll split them all into three. And then for the middle section, we will replace it with another equilateral triangle. And in each of these steps, that new equilateral triangle will have side lengths that are one third of the size of the side lengths from the previous step. And we can carry out this process infinitely many times. You can start seeing this snowflake shape forming here, but we can look at an animation of this starting with the equilateral triangle. In fact, it would actually be upside down in the animation and just carrying out this process step by step to get the much more complicated looking Coke snowflake. And here you can see starting with that equilateral triangle and then just carrying out the process over and over again. And this will only go, I believe, to seven steps, but you can imagine that the image, the clarity of this image, its precision is limited by the computer software. 
So at some point, it really just looks like that final image. And you can imagine this process being carried out forever. But the main takeaway from this is that we start with something very simple and we carry out a simple process, but we do it infinitely many times and we get a very complicated detailed shape. And what we can do next is look at the bottom section of this. Really, we can look at any section and we're going to look at that and just zoom in on it as far as we want. So we're going to take a closer look at that and just zoom in so that we can see exactly how complicated it is. And by zooming in, we'll get a better idea of why we would say this is self-similar. And you can see that as we zoom in, the picture doesn't really change that much since this object, like most fractals, is self-similar. It looks the same at different levels of magnification. And of course, this picture is limited by the software use. If we want a more precise looking picture, we'll just need a better computer program to run this, but we can get a rough idea of what this looks like as we continue to zoom in. It has this infinite complexity. And the amazing thing about this shape is that its perimeter is infinite. If we tried to measure the length around the entire shape, what we'll see is that that perimeter is infinitely long. Assuming we carried out this process infinitely many times, then the perimeter around it, the length around, is infinite. But the area of the shape, how much space it takes up, that's actually a finite number. So this is a shape that has infinite perimeter but finite area. And if we go back to our original shapes, these other purely mathematical fractals are created with a similar process. It's a bit different, but it starts with something simple and then repeats the process to infinity. So we'll look at those in later videos, but you can get a rough idea of how they work by just looking at one of them.